Hello. In this video, I would like to take you through setting up some of the most commonly used features on Defender and also show you a few features that are a little less obvious, but no less useful for that. The first thing I would recommend is to download the Land Rover iGuide app. This contains not only a full searchable copy of the handbook, but also a reference guide to warning lights on the dashboard, a frequently asked questions section, and a visual tour around the inside and outside of the car with information on the controls, buttons, and features. It's a great source of immediate information. When a question pops into your head or you see a button and just wonder, well, what does that do? The remote app provides monitoring of many systems. When you first run the app, there is a quick start guide to aid setup. And then it provides control over remote locking and unlocking of the car, tells you how much fuel is in the tank, reports the last park location of the car so you can always find your way back to it, and it can export a full journey log in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. So if you're tracking business mileage, well, this is easy to keep track of. It also provides remote activation of the climate system, cooling the interior in summer before you get in, or warming and de-icing the car in winter whilst keeping the car fully secure. OK, let's start then with the smart key. Lock and unlock seem pretty obvious with a reassuring click and folding mirrors responding to each one. Pressing the lock button just once will lock the car, pressing twice will double lock. This means the car cannot be unlocked from the inside, so even if someone smashes a window, they still can't open the doors. This simple step is crucial to keeping your vehicle secure. Always double lock either from the key fob or via tapping the door handle twice for vehicles with keyless entry. You'll hear a beep to confirm this is done successfully. Next, there is a button to unlock just the boot. All the other doors remain locked and alarmed, but the interior alarm is deactivated. Remember to lock the car again once the door is closed. Next, there's a handy button to trigger the lights. So if you're approaching the car in the dark or simply trying to find it in a dark car park, this will switch the lights on. By default, they will stay on for 30 seconds. This can be extended up to four minutes if you want using the instrument panel inside the car. More on that later. Unlocking the car will also trigger the headlights and they'll remain on for a short period after locking to provide light to see you to your door. The final button is a panic alarm. Press for three seconds or press three times in three seconds and the horn will sound and the hazard lights will flash. After five seconds, this can be cancelled by pressing the button for a further three seconds. Holding the unlock button down will operate global opening, lowering all of the windows to allow air into the car before you enter on a hot day. Now similarly, if you get out and then realise you've left a window open, hold the lock button to activate global closing to raise all the windows and secure the car. These operations can be enabled or disabled using the instrument panel options. If your car is fitted with keyless entry, you don't even need to remove the key from your bag or pocket. So long as it's within a foot or so of the car, you can just press the button on the door handle and the doors will unlock. When you leave the car, press the button to secure the vehicle. All our latest models have a Land Rover in-control secure vehicle tracker fitted and your retailer will have performed the first steps in the setup process. You should have received an in-control email inviting you to activate the tracker and it's worth checking your junk folder if you haven't seen it. The activation process takes less than two minutes and once complete and the product is activated, you can download the certificate from within the in-control portal. If your insurer wishes to see proof of an activated tracker, simply go to the Your In-Control Services section to find it. Getting into the car then, the first thing you need to do is find a comfortable position. Seat controls can be found on the outside of the seat. Steering wheel adjustment is either electric, using a joystick on the right-hand side of the steering column, or manual. Pull the lever on the underside of the steering column down, adjust the reach and rake to suit, and then push the lever up to lock the steering wheel in place. Mirrors are adjusted using the controls on the driver's door. Select which mirror to adjust using the buttons, and then use the joystick to adjust the angles. Incidentally, pressing both buttons together will fold the mirrors in. Useful if you're squeezing through a tight gap. Once everything is adjusted to your satisfaction, if you have memory settings, you can save these positions. Just press the M button 
and then within five seconds one of the numbered memory settings, you'll hear a chime to confirm that it is saved. You can switch between stored settings just by pressing these numbered buttons. Great if you share the car with another driver. Controls for the electric windows are located on the driver's door. Locking the operation of windows from the rear seats will also engage the child locks on the rear doors. Most people will want to leave their windscreen wipers set to auto. Move the stalk to its lowest position and then come up one notch. Sensitivity can be adjusted using the rotating collar. Pull forward for screen wash. The outer collar operates the rear wiper and the button on the end controls the rear screen wash. Similarly, the headlights are best set to auto by rotating the outer collar. Pulling the stalk towards you will flash the main beam. When driving at night, pushing the stalk away from you will toggle the main beam on and off. If your car is fitted with auto high beam assist, the car will automatically dip main beam if it detects oncoming traffic. If you have matrix LED lights, the car will keep main beam on almost all the time, creating cones of shadow around other road users so they're not dazzled, but maintaining full beam everywhere else. This mode operates above 30 miles an hour and requires the lighting control to be set to auto. There's an array of controls on the steering wheel. On the right hand side are the controls for cruise control, pressing set when traveling at your preferred speed and the car will automatically maintain that speed until you touch the brakes or press cancel. Pressing the accelerator will cause the car to speed up, but when you release it, it will return to the set speed. Nudging the rocker switch up and down will increase or reduce the set speed. If your car has adaptive cruise control, a radar monitors the speed of the car in front of you. If they're traveling slower, the car will automatically match their speed. The arrow buttons will increase and decrease the distance between you and the car in front. Whilst you need to be traveling over 20 miles an hour to activate cruise control, adaptive cruise will match the speed of the car in front all the way down to zero. If the traffic restarts within three seconds, your car will pull away with the traffic. Any longer than that, and you'll need to give the car permission to go with a gentle press on the accelerator. This function means that adaptive cruise control can be used in tiring stop-start traffic situations. The limb button switches the function between cruise control and speed limiter. Lane keep assist can be toggled on and off with the button marked with converging white lines. If the heated steering wheel is fitted, the control will be found here. On the left side, the roller wheel controls volume and left and right buttons skip tracks or change radio stations. Pressing the circle symbol triggers the instrument panel menus, allowing configuration of heads-up display, media options, trip computer and information display options. And the steering wheel symbols change to provide arrows to navigate through those menus. Explore these options to set the car up to your preferences. The phone icon will answer a call or start the process to dial a contact on the connected phone, or whilst in a call, will end it. A quick press on the voice control button will allow you to use voice commands, wait for the chime and then call home. A full list of the available commands can be accessed on the main infotainment screen. Starting the car is as simple as putting your foot on the brake pedal and pressing the start button. So long as the smart key is in the car somewhere, the engine will start. When you switch the car on, the 10 inch touchscreen will display three main options, navigation, media, and telephone. If you haven't already paired a phone, it will prompt you to do so. Tap on the phone tab, then open your Bluetooth devices on your phone and select Defender. Accept pairing on both your phone and the screen, and from now on, it should automatically pair each time you get in the car, allowing hands-free calls, voice dialing, and music streaming over Bluetooth. Text messages can be displayed on the main screen and a soft key allows for them to be read aloud. On Apple phones, it's necessary to enable this feature by selecting settings and Bluetooth, then selecting the connection to the vehicle and enabling show notifications. If you prefer, connecting your phone with a cable will allow Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to mirror your phone screen on the car's infotainment system. A long press of the voice control button will then connect you to your phone's voice assistant. The next tab to look at is media. The home screen shows what's playing along with icons for source and favorites, and also an icon to instantly mute the playback. 
The full view allows access to a full station list. Tapping stars will add them to your favourite shortlist. The phone I've just added will now also show as a source, jumping into the last audio played on the device. Browse will allow access to the full range of songs, artists and albums available on the phone. And again, many selections can be made by voice with a quick press on the voice button on the steering wheel. Tune radio to BBC Radio 2. The last of the main three tabs to examine is navigation. Right from the home screen, there is a quick set button for your home destination, a search icon and a time to arrival icon. Pressing search brings up a text box into which you can type an address, postcode or place of interest and a number of preset categories. Selecting one of these will display nearby options and give a star rating if reviews are available. Parking options will even show the hourly rate for the car park. However a destination is chosen, three routes are available, the fastest, the shortest and the most economical option. Destinations can be easily set by voice. Navigation, take me to 33 Baker Street, London. As well as appearing on the main 10-inch screen, navigation instructions will also be shown on the cluster display in front of the driver. If the car is fitted with the interactive driver display, the screen can be reconfigured for a one or two dial display by pressing Menu and selecting Display Options. You can even bring the map across the whole screen, retaining a digital readout of your speed. Defender is supplied with a 4G data connection to allow over-the-air updates of the infotainment systems, navigation maps and add new features. When the system has an update available, it will alert the driver on the main menu screen and ask for permission to update. Simply give permission, PV can update whilst driving. From the home screen, pressing the cog icon will take you into settings, where you can find options for connectivity, languages and many vehicle safety features. It's worth looking through these to understand the full range of customization available. It is possible to set up one or more profiles to allow Defender to adapt itself to your needs. Enter settings, select all and then profiles. The car can be set to recognize different drivers either by different smart keys or the signal from their mobile phone. So the system can develop separate profiles for each driver's preferences. If memory seats are fitted, this starts with automatically putting the seat in the correct position for each driver. It can also analyse behaviour to pre-select navigation routes based on your regular routine, store audio preferences and remember climate settings. So the car might automatically put the heated seats on when it's below 6 degrees outside. Remember that you listen to a particular radio station on the way to work, but listen to a podcast on the way home. Know that on Thursday you come home via the gym and set the navigation accordingly. It will also remember that you like a one dial display but your partner prefers two dials with the map shown between them. Obviously this involves storing a level of personal data so when setting the system up you can choose what data is stored on each profile. If you don't want it to store location data or information on your phone calling habits just deselect these options. Back to the home screen. The camera icon reveals one of Defender's showstopper features, surround view cameras that can simulate an overhead view, but also a selection of views from around the vehicle known as remote scout. These are simulated views using data from the cameras and ultrasonic sensors. Areas which cannot initially be seen by the cameras are filled in when the vehicle starts to move. And of course in off-road mode there is the clear sight ground view, showing exactly where the front wheels are on the terrain underneath the front of the car. The final icon on the home screen is Tile View, which shows all the available apps on the system. These can be added to the home screen by swiping left and selecting the Edit icon. Then drag the desired functions from the bottom row to the top. When you return to the home screen, you can side scroll through all the tiles. Many tiles show live information. So the wheel info tile shows that the differentials are unlocked and how much power is going to each wheel right from the home screen. The panel below the touch screen is dominated by two large dials which set the temperature for climate control. Pressing the dial in will toggle function to control the heated seats. The terrain response modifier button 
will enable the right-hand dial to select different off-road modes, offering enhanced control for a variety of different circumstances. The ventilation modifier will allow the left dial to control fan speed. Front and rear heated windscreens and air recirculation are controlled with the centre panel. Defender's variable height air suspension can also be controlled from this panel. A Defender descends 40mm to allow easier access getting in and out of the car and can rise up 75mm from normal drive height to give maximum ground clearance of over 29cm on rough terrain and enable the full wading depth of 900mm. The rear suspension height can also be controlled using the switches in the load space, which can make loading the boot or hitching a trailer easier. You can even control the suspension height from the smart key. With the engine running and hazard lights activated, close the doors and press the headlights and tailgate unlock buttons simultaneously to lower the suspension, headlights and unlock to raise the suspension, and the headlights and lock to set the vehicle to normal height. More details about the operation of air suspension can be found in iGUIDE. Defender features a pistol grip gear selector. Press the brake, squeeze the trigger and pull towards you to engage drive, push away to engage reverse. Shifting towards you and then nudging to the left will enable sport mode. This will alter the operation of the automatic gearbox, holding onto gears longer to give punchier performance. The electronic park brake will disengage automatically when you drive away and re-engage when you switch the engine off. A manual override control is located by the driver's knee. When driving, be aware the start-stop system is standard, so the engine will cut out when you come to a stop, instantly restarting in the time it takes for your foot to move from the brake to the accelerator when you pull away. This can be overridden with a control on the lower panel, but it delivers a surprisingly high fuel saving and helps reduce air pollution in cities and towns. All cars are fitted with exhaust filters. These need to refresh occasionally and you may notice more visible exhaust emissions whilst this is happening. For a diesel it tends to happen when the car is being driven at higher speeds and the exhaust gets hot. For a petrol it happens more frequently when you lift off the throttle and more oxygen passes through the system. Occasionally the car may display a message saying drive to clear. This is most common on diesels which have been used for predominantly short, low speed journeys, in which case they need a blast down the dual carriageway. For petrols, it happens when they've been used under load, like towing. Find occasions to lift off the throttle and slow using engine braking to clear the filter. Now this video has really only touched on the essentials. Please make use of the iGUIDE app or videos on our YouTube channel to find out more or contact your retailer with any questions. Thank you for your time and enjoy your time with the Defender.